So today, um, we are doing a, quite an interesting chapter, actually, of of um, the the book that we're working through. So we're working through outstanding user interfaces with Shiny as a book club on the Arthur Data Science community. The chapter today is chapter five, and it's called Web uh, Web Application Concepts, and kind of covers the you know, from top to bottom of how a um, user might interface with your application, what happens between the application as they view it and the server upon which it runs and things. And um, yes, it's a very good chapter. Um, Frederick is going to take us through the contents of it. And um, yeah, so uh, do you want to introduce yourself, Frederick? You're a um uh long-standing member of the shiny book clubs and seemingly a, a lot of other book clubs on half a day science hello hi uh i'm federica uh from italy yes i've done multiple book clubs and um yeah so so i'm quite new about this hml language so apologies but i'm just like reporting what's in the chapter and asking questions to be honest right. uh, <laughs> so about myself uh, i'm an independent researcher uh, interested in uh, improving my modeling skills, especially uh, about infectious diseases. I'm a collaborator with the ICME, and I'm an uh, author, a reviewer of books and articles on the various health topics, especially on the, um, the metrics, health metrics, such as DALIS, ELL, so the number of years lived with uh, disability, number of years of life lost, and those I'm interested in uh, improving my modeling skills and as well as be able to use all the tools that which are uh, available and I, I needed. So, um, okay. Right. Right. Uh, right. Um, Going to show, uh, okay, I've already pushed the notes. Great. So you can find it in the, in the repo. Uh, where is it? Okay, this is my R. Can you all see my R, hopefully? The, your screen is loading, so now it's up. Yep, yeah, yep, yep, that looks great. Okay. So this chapter basically is quite straightforward for, for what my my what is my understanding uh, at least the first part. So the last part is the, the where, where the meat is, and uh, uh, I had a bit of like difficulties, so uh, might need some help. Uh, but let's let's get started and. Um, uh, have a look at what's in this chapter. So we are going to uh, have a look at underlying web application for Shiny integration, uh, what is a client-server model, and the HTTP protocol, as well as web servers. Okay, Shiny, uh, it's, it's uh, um, a real and proper um, application, uh, HML application. So it's an interactive uh, website where you can load and store uh, all the elements of your analysis. And how it works is that there is a client which is your UI, and there is a server, which is your server, and they interact to each other, passing to a network. Um, what's happened is that, so you load the library, because there is a package, a shiny package, and there, there are even other packages that for, for making your apps improving your app even better. But let, let's 
let's uh, stay on the, on the very best. Okay. So, and Shiny App is made of a UI and the server. And then when you have UI set, UI set your server, then you use this function, Shiny App UI server, to launch the app. So this is uh, what I mentioned here. So there is a UI, which is a client, and it stores all your requests to be made in the server. So the server is a function, even, even a UI is a function, but the, the, the server is a function, which is an active function. And it's, it's this sort of, is, it is the engine of your app. Uh, these two elements interact through a network. Uh, if we have a look at the developer settings in the browser page, so I need to show you this uh, um, step. I think I, I, it's better if I share um, my entire screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So otherwise, I cannot switch on the okay. It's, this should be my entire screen. Um, okay, uh, so I load the app, and then if I run this basic um, part of the Shiny option. Okay. So then if I inspect the elements. Okay. We cannot see uh, much, especially what uh, it mentioned in the uh just uh, that maybe so it mentioned the the network uh tab uh the, the, there is not much to see but if we reload the app Yeah, I go into the browser. This is the app. Inspect the app. And then reload. Okay, now it's like populated. We have a list of files. All these uh, uh, are called, you see the, the app is empty, so there, there is nothing in the app. Okay, but already we, we got many things. So two relate to each other. Uh, the, uh, this, this, all these calls are used. So there is a boost up, uh, a script. The so the, the call all the all the, the requests and as you can see if I just have a look at this status code what is mentioned in the chapter is that we we see this two hundred value with the green dot means that the status is okay so as well as if you if you find uh, like four or four so other other different codes that they may be not not, not mm, uh, status of care okay so the, if you see 200 that, that is fine uh would you like to add uh, some more uh, insights about uh, the network uh, of of uh, basic tiny app within this um, um, this, this framework here. 
maybe. Uh, going back to, um, to the slides. So this uh, uh, basically, we we can see that the, there are many files, and the, the, this files shows you what's happened uh, within your uh, uh, client and server. So the UI and the server. There is a request, and there is a response, and then a request, and, and then response. Um, obviously. Uh, it depends when you, where you, uh, how is, is your app made? If, is it, if it's very, you know, contains like uh, heavy data visualizations or calculation in general, uh, and if your server is busy or so if it's a pro server, so uh, certain things. Then. So you might need to improve the speed of your, of your app. And uh, to improve the speed of your app, the speed of your app is um, basically uh, influenced by the number of requests uh, that are made from the server. Okay. And for this, uh, the HTTP, um, uh, the, the, in particular, the HTTP request. Um, This uh, this request basically what's happened? Um, th these are uh, basically intentions step as defined, and uh, the HTTP it's a protocol which is undirectional, and this means that it's just as the same as a phone call. So I make a phone call and I go to one direction, uh, as well as when I uh, send uh, an input, it goes just on one direction. And when I receive an input, this as well, it's uh, from, from just one, one, yeah. one direction. Yeah. Like once I uh, wrote. And so there is a, um, th this um, language, which I get, uh, so I ask, no, so I ask something to get, but it's I get and then post, so I submit uh, the response. So this get post is some is is what's happening inside the HTTP protocol. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, these are uh, get and post are two kind of the 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 things that you can ask a server to do as, as part of HTTP, isn't it? So in in your your example here, you're getting some content from Google. So you're asking the server at Google to send you. Um, some information from that site um whereas a post request would be like to we were you to enter a search term into the google home page that would initiate a post request i guess so okay. uh, like, yeah anyway sorry i didn't mean to put yeah uh yeah yeah no thank you uh please um uh, okay um add anything uh, as much as possible. So this is what, if I use this uh, HTTR uh, package, uh, this provides this function. Okay. So this function gets a URL. So, you um, ask uh, for a URL um, of the page to retrieve. And uh, 
so that there may, may be other uh, options that you can add. But let, let's stay on, on what's in the chapter. So if I do, for example, use it for uh, get the google.com uh, page, this is the response. Okay, so, so we have a status 200. This is to show you something. And I, uh, can you hear me? Hello? Oh, yeah, we can, we can hear you, Fana, I think. Okay. Uh, so if I, I go uh, here, okay. because I have all these banners, so the, uh, if I go here and I do like chat GPT, yeah, so in Italy, this cannot be used, okay? Access negated, disabled. But I use this uh, URL, I go here. You see that this is status 200 content, so I have some, some information here. If I put this here instead, you see that the status is different, 400, 403. And I do not have much information here as well as I had before. Okay. Uh, obviously, if I do differently, like I do something like that, this changes, status is okay. And so you partially use it, but then, you know. And uh, the, What is this? Uh, there is something in the chat. What is this? Uh, uh, knowledge based status. What a HD status code. So, like this is not. This is for, uh, for example. So the that was different. This is a four o three. This is not page not found because of error, but it's it's something different. So, um. Well, anyway, um, that was um, interesting. Okay. Uh, in fact, so in the Google, in the Google, uh, in the Google page within the Google page we had some information like you can see that is a document type HTML and the scope uh, is, it's like a web page I'm, I'm not uh, I can I can't provide you with much expertise on this on those things so but uh, the, the for the purpose uh, what we are doing so you want to check the status and um, so a, a structure of a URL is even um, more information of a structure URL. Uh, it's on Mozilla. This is um, another interesting website that Russ mentioned quite a few times. Uh, and you find, uh, I think, some, some, some interesting uh, information about the structure of the and the type of URL that, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, what else? So um, web app file structure, we know that uh, it's, it's different from general web page, okay? Even if you can, in some web pages, you can, uh, they are interactive. So you, you add information, you might, be able even to do some calculation and everything. But uh, if you ever look at the uh, inside structure, you always have like an index uh, HTML uh, file. Why the shiny app doesn't have a, an index uh, file? So where is it? Basically the shiny app, when you uh, call the shiny app to, to, be, to, 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 to be run, uh, the, the file is created on the fly. Uh, in, in general, 
uh, a, a structure of a basic app is uh, to have two files, like, uh, so I have one uh, uh, wall file with, with everything, uh, UI and server, mm. uh, name it app.r, or you have two files, uh, ui.r and server.r. Uh, so this is uh, the, the basic, the basic the, of, of the app. Then for, for the uh, extra um, assets uh, within your app, such as uh, uh, JavaScript, CSS, or images, images, you, you have a, a folder named www, uh, which contains uh, the, those extra assets for your app. Serving the app, that means when you publish the app. So you make your app and everything. So the app is ready. Uh, now you want to share with the others. So within a team, you can share it. Uh, you can share the files and everything, but uh, you might want to publish it on a server. So you have a shiny server open source. You have the pro or the Quarto Connect, uh, Deposit Connect, I don't know I said, uh, Quarto, and then you have the shinyapp.io. You have different servers. Then uh, I mentioned in, the, in this chapter, it is, is about this, this um, package, uh, HTTPUV. Uh, this package basically, uh, um, it, it's a package that relies with uh, your shiny app server. It provides a dedicated server for your app. Basically it says it fires a web server for each app directly from R. So it makes things easier because sometimes uh, uh, the app is slow, it gets crowded or somehow. So you can use this, um, this package. Uh, what's happened here is th this is an example. So um, there is a, a function, which is a call uh, that sends a request um, for a start. There is a status okay, and then the content uh, type uh, HTML and a body, which is HTML. So when you uh, install the package and uh, um, load it, then you can use this uh, start server. Uh, and then what's happened is that starts uh, a shiny app life cycle. Uh, and this um, um, this server makes you makes basically things going smoother than than uh, um, simply do not use it. Basically. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if you so, have uh, so like all, sorry. So yeah, yeah. all of the kind of um, um, data transferred between a user and the server on which your app is running is handled by this package HTTP UV, mm. is, is that right? And it, it's responsible for um, determining whether you've sent a, a valid request and, and things like that. Um, that's interesting. Mm. I, did, I haven't really come across HTTP UV, but it's probably under the hood of shiny and extremely important and i don't know a great deal about it but yeah that's quite basically it says that one the ui is processed the shiny app uh, um, is available yeah with the use of the this package you have uh, um, a dedicated server mm. okay so the main function is start server and then, uh, okay, you need to add, uh, obviously you need to be like, you need to add the information that usually are 
automatically loaded when you use yeah. the server that is already made. But uh, it can be uh, so you need to specify the host port and so what is the app. Um, and then uh, uh, so it handles uh, or the, 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 the HTTP requests and return uh, the response. So it's a server in itself. Um, it's a virtual server or something like that. What, what, what can I say? Because my question is, what, what, how is this different from, so why, how can I use it? Because, um, so I have my app and I can eventually uh, pu publish it on shinyapp.io, shiny for example, or yeah. in addition to this, use this package. Because this, so this is the pass through. Um, I don't, hmm. uh, my my understanding, which could be completely wrong, is that basically this this package is sort of infrastructure for 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 shiny in a certain sense. So it's like, if I remember from earlier in the section five point two, I think it was talking about how it. Uh, takes care of like, you know, um, like basically setting up a, a server, uh, a, a server that will kind of receive requests. And then I guess it, 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 you know, it has a URL, it has ports, it serves up, it serves up the app. Uh, so I guess these are things that probably from most shiny users you wouldn't want to, or you wouldn't have to deal with, but I guess it exposes things to you that you could deal with if you want like configurations if you wanted to expose like let's say a different port um uh then 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 shiny does i think shiny is typically like creating a random port or opening up like a random port that maybe you could have a fixed port instead but this is my very loose loose understanding as someone who's not very proficient in web technologies mm -hmm. yeah yeah maybe if you want to customize and use an, a different port or other things yeah uh, okay, so then um, what's up in uh, within a shiny app life cycle? Uh, so you see that um, even here is mentioned and is intervening within. Uh, uh the the start of the server specifying uh, maybe some, some um parameters and so this is the client so the ui and this is the server uh, within the client, the, the host name, so the, the URL, um, and so the, the HTTP uh, structure is made, and then send uh, a request to a GET that pass through the server and um, uh, uh, engine the UI R code uh, with all the the information and then send the response which pass through a web socket and all the other uh, parameters that are uh, uh, customized uh, customizable can be customized and um, uh, post uh, a response on the page Yeah, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, there's a lot going on that you don't know about, isn't there, when you're writing these things? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, okay. Um, so uh, if, if we're, if the aim of this book is to teach us kind of how to um, make our own, HTML 
templates and modify things like CSS and JavaScript and things like that, it it will be HTTP UV that's responsible for kind of um, making those um, dependencies available to the user. So like, you know, um, it, that package will be responsible for like pointing the request from the user's computer to say, um, the location of your custom CSS or something like that. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, is it, so does this seem odd to anyone who's done app development in any other settings outside of Shiny? It seems like these are may may well be fairly standard um, processes that you'd need to go through for any web application. Um, Excuse me. <laughs> okay. So uh, uh, I don't have this experience to. No. Yeah, I can't. I can't I can set and change the port, of course, under request, and if the number is provided, this is for sure. But no, I. I yeah, uh, that that might be that's something I, I did it very. You know. Yeah. But in this case, I think I agree with Arthur, uh, and it serves as a, mm, to customize the these parameters uh, that otherwise are fixed. You cannot access them. Okay. Yeah. Then uh, what else? Um, I think it's uh, um, the the best part is uh, this bit here, which is a bit heavy for me. But um, so building the UI, and I know how to build a UI, but what's happened within the index HTML file? Uh, because it's built on the fly, but th there is th there is one. Um, uh, the the fluid page. Uh, how how is seen? Um, uh, so. Basically, is yeah. Well, no, go ahead. I was just going to say this part was, part was really interesting. Yeah. So, uh, this is the part that uh, is behind the the scene of the the the, the UI. Uh, and it is what's happening in the in the browser. So when you uh, when your app is. Um, basically published. And so this is the this is the UI that you make usually in the fluid page that is such as some text input. And you expect some output in this case, this type of UI. The HTML template contains a system file and some other like information about, so it tags the body UI and uh, uh, it, it is a document. And so the output, this, this is a HTML template. Uh, 
Uh, HTML template process an HTML HTML template um, return a tag list object and uh, complete the HTML document. So um, then return object will also have class HTML document and can be passed to the function render document. So in uh, oh, sorry. So in the example that you showed, where you were calling HTML template with that little UI mm -hmm. uh, thing that was written, that that template is is taking a file that sits in the um, shiny package and filling in some blanks within it so it's taking the body that's defined in your fluid page call there and putting that body into the shiny uh default template as the the body and and kind of so you end up with the 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 kind of html tags for that fluid page get wrapped up with within a surrounding bit of code that makes the HTML page as a whole a kind of valid piece of um, a, a valid web page, I guess. I had a question about that little text or that little snippet I get uh, that, that Federica showed. Um, I It was like the, it looked like they're like the um, um, I guess from R, like the embrace operator, I guess they're calling it R Lang. I was wondering mm -hmm. if it was that or if it was like must mustache or um like a, like a templating language like mustache. Cause it, it seems like it's yeah, by by my reading, it's basically like you have this shiny function that does something, you know, like uh, for example, generates the body, and then you just kind of copy paste the body that's generated you know, mm, from from yeah. your R code into that into that placeholder. Yeah, but I, I didn't know like by what mechanism that was done. Oh, okay. It looks like Lucio just just dropped a link, which is probably touching on that. Yeah, it's quite it, it's quite common to use these double braces for for te in templating language. I think is it Ginger and um and and a couple of other things use the 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 same sort of syntax. I've seen it in Django uh, things as well. Um, but yeah, I think it probably just evaluated by r and the whatever's within the template is replaced with whatever you pass as your argument to html template um so but yeah you have this uh, ui and then uh, the html template calls the the body the ui body and they they look exactly the same but this is a uh, HTML. And what is it? What is this one here? This is not. Well, let, let's go back to the chapter. So the output within the the the, the browser, so the HTML is is this and contains the fluid um, page. And um, yeah, so there is um, some some uh, function that are mentioned, the render tags, resolve dependencies and create web dependency and render dependencies. To... One, one question so like if you were going to let's say pass a different template to shiny um i mean i guess you'd have to go pretty far down the shiny stack to do so 
uh, I mean, is that is that right, or would it be better to just create, let's say, a, a package that serves up a different template? So in the book, they mention a few different templates or frameworks uh, that I guess might well have different, uh, you know, diff different templates. I mean, maybe they, for example, just in the head, put uh, you know, like a the dependencies of that framework. Like, let's say you're using, I don't know, Bootstrap five. But it, Kind of hard codes bootstrap five as a CSS style sheet in there. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, uh, and yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. So, uh, about what Arthur mentioned, yeah, it's not necessary to develop another package in order to use a different HTML template. In, in your own app directory, you can define an index.html file, and it can have a similar structure to the one in the template. It also to the one from the link that I shared, but that can be the template that it is used by Shiny uh, now by default. So you only have to use the same bracket notation uh, that Russ mentioned, these double curly braces, and you can input your your R code for the HTML in the same form that you see in that article. So it's not necessary uh, to limit yourself to the default template. You can use your custom index.html and Shiny will recognize it. Uh, cool, thanks Lucio. Yeah. Okay. So there, there's more example, which the, this HTML tools package uh, using the rendered tags, for example, with the icon cogs, just, just an example. And then it shows the structure to see that this is, looks like uh, a list. Uh, and so then you can tag these dependencies to see uh, within the HTML language, where if there's a link, yeah. So my my question is, what is does this uh, uh, goes in my app inside my of my app? Somehow, no. So, sorry, as you mean, you mean um, when the app is running, is this something that's that's kind of continually being? Reevaluated or something. So this is what's happened behind the scene of the app. Is this yeah. it? Mm. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, it, it um, it'll, it'll. I'm not sure exactly at which stage it'll happen, but on the server where you've deployed your app. Then, when um, when a when a, a request is made to that server, then I, th I think this um, document rendering step will ar arrive ha happen. But I I'm not sure exactly. Because to me that doesn't quite make sense because it means that it it would happen have to happen for each user, um, and it, it seems like a uh, it so, seems to be happening when we are creating the uh, the index HTML file that we will say that we will send be a, a server method chasing the post one uh, to the browser so that we can see the, the app. Okay. So, so it, it doesn't happen every time 
the app is created only in the initial step of creation. Okay. So, but here, the use of this function is shown just to to to, to let you understand what's up, what, what would be the output or uh, within the uh, so, so the the HTML output of of uh, actually happen inside your app. So you make a simple app uh, and all those things happen. So like list of files are shown, all these things there. And you have, uh, uh, for example, in, within the bootstrap, um, all these things. So these functions here are to show you, uh, for example, this is your UI. This is your app, the UI of your app. And this is the UI that being called by this function, HTML, HTML template. Well, okay which is here, HTML template, tag body. So you don't do these things. So it does automatically, is that right? So you might want to modify it somehow if you need it, but usually when you make a app and then you publish it on one of those servers, yeah. you don't do this. No. You don't, Okay, no, that's that's the but am am I right that sort of um the index.html page for your app doesn't exist until 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 a user tries to connect to your app? I mean my my reading is that sort of it, it's like index.html was sort of ephemeral, if I can put it that way, that when someone sends, you know, um, tries to connect to your to your app, whatever the URL might be, that, you know, your server basically does like a server-side rendering of the page via R, and it, it serves up the page, right? Um, it, am I right on that, that it's not, it's not, because it's dynamic, it's not like static content. It's not like a, you know, index.html exists somewhere on, on, on the server. Instead, it's like being dynamically generated for every connection or something like that. This is what they said. So the index.html file is fire on the fly when you run your app. And if that is done all the times. So if you made changes, more probably is maybe rebuilt again. But if you don't make changes, I think it's done once. Uh, and then my question is, where is it? Because it's done on the fly, that, but then if you search it, it's not there. I'm curious, has anyone looked in the file system of, uh, let's say like a shiny app lo running locally while it's like a page has been rendered? I, I wonder if the index.html file e exists or it just has some other way of serving up a page. I don't know, maybe this is too fine of like technical. Yeah. Point, but oh, I'm curious. I, I don't know whether it really, whether it needs to exist on the server provided you can t transfer a file for use on the browser does that and and if it is something that you can generate dynamically say if um you could have a like a query string or something like that in your um url 
that modifies the version of the app that is um, presented to the user, whether you'd end up with a different index.html content than, uh, you know, um, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly, but, um, yeah, I, I can, I can, uh, but so what you're saying, Russ, is basically for every connection, then the server basically sends us a response. Um, it, it sends us a response, the page, right? The HTML page. Um, yeah. Right. And then if you make like subsequent requests, if you interact with the page, then the server will do the same thing again and send, you know, a different. Oh, no, I don't, I don't think that's the case for Shiny, but it, it, okay. it would be for some, for some websites, it would be like that where, you know, if you um, enter text into a text box and click send or, or whatever, um, it would make a, a, an additional HTTP request for, to, transfer data in that way i i think the websocket thing that shiny uses is a little bit more um uh advanced than than having to you know so i don't think it's like the browser has to reload the page or anything after you've made a uh a, 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 a you know posted data or something but um yeah because I mean, obviously, the the index.html, when it's kind of interpreted by the browser, will be, um, you know, converted into this DOM representation, and the DOM itself can be, you know, modified during the um, user's session. Um, so what you actually, what the computer is. Um, representing on 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 the web page may be quite different from the what was in the index.html to begin with um but yeah i don't uh hmm, I'm not sure does that help at all arthur <laughs> no i i i think it i think it does uh, i mean i think honestly the limiting factor here is is my own kind of understanding of how the underlying web tech works, uh, you know, and, and web sockets. I'll have to do a little research outside. But what you're saying makes it clear for us. It does make it clear. Then finally, uh, th there is the mention of this other. Uh, Uh, these are the packages. Um, no. I think it's everything uh, for now. For the the like to have an idea of what what's happening. That's all I've got. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, there's quite a lot because it's only like 10 to 12 pages or something, but there was a lot of content in that um, about how, you know, shiny applications are um, handled by R such that they can then be treated like full blown web applications from a user's perspective. Um, yeah. Cool, cool. Thanks. Did you learn a lot from that chapter? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. No. Thanks for for taking us through it. So um, next time, I believe it's Lucio talking about CSS. So we start a new section of the book on. Um, a, a few different tools for styling an application. So initially on CSS and then later on using a a, a more flexible language called SAS. Um, and uh, yeah, 
uh great so that so that'll be the next big section of the book i think it's three or four chapters related to styling um and lucio is going to do that next week cool right thanks ever so much everyone for coming along and federica for presenting um uh cool um yeah and if you want to discuss this feel free to use the slack channel and everything so great. see you later thanks see you next week <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.